I'm going to jump right into post-resuscitation care. There's not a ton here. I just want to kind of go over. There's eight slides left, um, including the objective slide. So we're going to identify signs associated with uh, ROSC, effectively manage hemodynamic instability, investigate possible causes of cardiac arrest, so going back to our H's and T's, and then hopefully make good, uh, solid treatment choices based on the cause, and then determine appropriate destination. So recognition of ROSC um, for, for those of you, if you have not been doing this for a long time, it may be a little difficult to determine if the patient got ROSC. One of the biggest advents that I think benefits us at this point is the, uh, the addition of entitled capnography. If you have the patient intubated or you can put them on capnography, just watch your capnography. There's no reason to stop and do pulse checks anymore because if they go from an entitled reading of 20 under CPR to 40 or 50 or 60, we know that there has been obviously a change internally. And that is the point where we should really be looking at ROSC. But other findings that they may have breathing, which is not agonal, it's actually breathing. They may be coughing, patient movement, palpable pulse, measurable blood pressure. Anytime we have a pulse, the very next thing we should be doing is getting a blood pressure and then obviously a sudden increase in your entitled CO2. So when we look at the American uh, Heart Association ROSC algorithm, uh, I'm going to go down through this just kind of quickly here, but ROSC obtained, we obviously want to manage their airway, manage respiratory parameters, and we're looking for saturation somewhere between 92 and 98 percent. That is based on those oxygen-free radicals. Uh, we don't want them to necessarily be at 100 percent, although from our perspective in the field, if I hit 100% on a patient that I just got ROSC, I would be perfectly fine with that. But understand where the American Heart Association is coming from. It's based on the oxygen-free radicals. We should be looking or guiding for an entitled CO2 of somewhere between 35 and 45. And our blood pressure should be somewhere greater than 90. Remember, this is your permissive hypotension. If you're looking at mean arterial pressure, it should be somewhere greater than 65. That tells us that they are perfusing their end organs. We should get a 12 lead EKG. Look at that to determine if there is a STEMI, anything like that. And then is the patient able to follow command? If they are, other critical care management may be needed, and then you should treat and, and evaluate for uh, reversible etiologies. If the patient is not able to follow commands, so this would go back again to the Monday night, um, then they are comatose. We're looking at targeted temperature management, brain CT, EEG, and other critical care management. And again, I have no true knowledge about what is going on, just like most of you, uh, but targeted temperature management, the other testing that they're referring to, these are the things that I would presume are actually occurring kind of behind the scenes. The initial stabilization phase, uh, this is from the American Heart with targeted temperature management. So these are things that are going on kind of behind the scenes. Um, in the hospital, but we can certainly try thinking about doing those or initiating them in the field. So the, the COR, if you're looking at that, that's class of recommendation. A class one recommendation is obviously the highest. And then LOE is level of evidence, um, with A being the highest level of evidence. So what you actually want to see is a 1A, but you can see here, we don't really have that. We have a 1B basically um, recommended and then one or I'm sorry, 2A, B, not recommended. That's what those um, R's and NR's are. So if you look, waveform capnography, we can do that. So put a check next to that. We can titrate their FiO2 for an SpO2 of 92 to 98%. This is more like ventilator strategy and management. But for us um, as EMTs and paramedics, we can do this. Turn up your um, your oxygen delivery device or turn it down. We want to try to maintain that to 92 to 98 percent. We want to titrate or entitle to 40, 35 to 45. We can do that based on the uh, the number of breaths that they are getting. So we can do that. Manage hemodynamic parameters, systolic pressure of greater than 90. We can do that. The one that would be really difficult for us to do is the targeted temperature management. 
And what American Heart recommends is 32 to 36 degrees Celsius for 24 hours of time, uh, which may be why you know, we're beyond that 24 hour period at this point, but it may be why we're still not hearing information about what's going on with him um, is because he's in the targeted temperature management protocol. And that is what I would assume is going on um, in the hospital. Remember your H's and T's, your hypovolemia, we can give fluid, hypoxia, your oxygen, hydrogen ion, acidosis, so sodium bicarb, hypo or hyperkalemia, we could think about bicarb or calcium depending. Uh, hypothermia, we can cover them up. We want to make sure that our patients are warm if they're hypothermic, um, not to mention the fact that the medications are not going to work if the patient doesn't have a normal body temperature. As far as your T's, your tension in the thorax, we can do cardiac uh, needle decompression, cardiac tamponade, uh, pericardiocentesis, although we're probably not in most conditions uh, able to do that. Toxins, we can reverse that with either naloxone or um, if it is a beta blocker overdose, maybe thinking of glucagon, et cetera, pulmonary thrombosis, pulmonary embolus, and then coronary thrombosis. And, and there's not a whole lot that we're going to be able to do in those situations other than just uh, supportive care. And then remember that appropriate destination. We need to take the patient where they are going to get appropriate care, um, depending on what they have going on. So if um, if we're thinking that it is a clot, coronary thrombosis, something like that, then they need to be in a cath lab where they have interventional cardiology all the way up to and including a cabbage or open heart surgery. Uh, don't take them to an outlying facility where they cannot do those. And I think that everybody is familiar and aware with that at this point, or hopefully they are. And then your post rosk checklist. And as you kind of see here, immediate action items, vitals, maintain their oxygenation, advanced airway, tidal volume to six to eight milliliters per kilo. If you're using a vent, uh, that would be the appropriate range. Same thing that we've already kind of gone over here. You're entitled to 35 to do your 12 lead. Think about IV fluids based on blood pressure, check their blood sugar. Um, and then you want to repeat that at a 10-minute ROSC stabilization period to see if you need to be making any changes to that. Contact the ED and let them know that you were on your way in.